Track mats are one of the most powerful features in After Effects, and using them wisely can save you tons of time and tons of layers. The latest update also just made them way better. So let's dive in and learn all about using track mats in After Effects. I feel like track mats are one of those key features that once you get a handle on them, it just automatically levels you up past the newbie stage. By the way, there's a link in the description where you can grab the project file I'm using for this demo for free over at schoolofmotion.com. So if you want, you can follow along and try these out for yourself. Okay, first things first, how are mats different from masks? Masks are one way to control the visibility of different parts of a layer. They're definitely useful, but since they move with the layer they're on, in an animation program, sometimes that's not gonna be the right solution for you. When you want to use one layer to determine the visibility of parts of a different layer, that's when you wanna use track mats. These are essential for reveals, compositing, and just not making yourself crazy. For starters, let's make sure you know where to find the controls. After Effects actually consolidates the switches and modes columns into one space by default to leave more room for the rest of your timeline. So if you only see switches, there's actually a little toggle button right here at the bottom of the panel. You can also toggle these by pressing the F4 key. You can add or remove them by clicking these little icons here in the lower left corner of your timeline panel, or you can add or remove any of the columns by right-clicking up here, choosing Columns, and then enabling the ones you'd like to see. Okay, so let's say that I only want this photo to be visible within this triangle shape, but I want to be able to move them independently, so a mask isn't a good solution here. We just need to make sure the Modes column is visible, then on this photo layer, under the column where it says Track Mat, I'll click on this drop-down menu and then choose the layer I want to use as a mat, Triangle. You can see the triangle layer is no longer directly visible. Its eyeball switch has been disabled, and now these two layers each have an extra little icon that they didn't have before, which indicates that the triangle is being used as a track mat and that the photo layer is being matted. If I toggle my transparency grid, you can see that this photo is indeed only visible within the triangle shape. If I actually want the opposite of this, where I see any parts of the photo that are outside of this shape, I can click this little switch here, which inverts the mat. This may seem like a hassle if you were just doing a simple shape cutout, but it means that you can easily create more complex cutouts with things like text, and you can animate both of the layers independently, which gives you a lot more control. I do need to point out that the track mat interface has changed quite a bit for After Effects 2023. If you're on an older version, the basics are still the same, but the interface will look different, and some of what I'm about to show you won't be possible. So before you leave a comment saying that yours looks different or it doesn't work, just go ahead and update, please. You can keep both versions installed. Now, previously, this matted layer, the photo, would only be able to look at the one layer directly above it to use as a mat. So if you change the layer order, this would break. But thanks to After Effects 2023, that's no longer the case. Both of these layers can now be anywhere in the layer stack, which means you can stick your mat at the bottom of the comp and forget about it, or put either of these wherever they make sense in your layer stack. Use mats to make a layer appear to be behind another while actually sitting above it in the layer stack. You can also always turn the visibility of the mat layer back on if you wanted to see it too. Maybe you could use blending modes to composite a layer on top of its own mat or composite several layers on top of their own shared mat. That's right, one single layer can now be the mat for multiple layers. This is huge. If you want multiple layers to use the same layer as a track mat, just select all the layers, then either use the drop-down menu or this pick whip to point to the layer you want to use, and voila. You can also have two layers use each other as mats if you need specific overlap or cutaway looks. Unfortunately, you can't chain these. So like the triangle uses the circle as the mat. And then if the photo uses the triangle as a mat, it's still the unmatted version of the triangle. But I could turn the triangle back on and see the matted version of that to use for compositing purposes. This new workflow also totally works with adjustment layers. So this opens up much easier options for compositing in VFX or especially with stylized text. Now you don't need to pre-compose or make a bunch of copies of your text layer. Just have all the other textures, effects, and adjustments matted by the original, editable text layer, which, remember, can still be visible itself as well. Compared to a lot of the complex workarounds we had to do before, this is pretty revolutionary. And speaking of revolutionary stuff, I'm going to take just a minute and talk about one of our most popular courses, Animation Bootcamp. It's basically an animation principles course inside of After Effects. A lot of users start out being really proficient in the cool technical stuff, like track mats. 
but don't take the time to learn the really important stuff, like the principles of animation and how these can be applied inside of After Effects. Animation Bootcamp was created for those folks who never went to art school and maybe didn't learn those animation principles the right way, or at all. This course will change every project you touch for the rest of your career, so check it out. Okay, back to the fun technical stuff. Every layer in After Effects has what's called an alpha channel, which is a channel you don't usually see directly, but it contains information that determines the transparency of different parts of the layer. With the track mats we've been applying, we're using the alpha information of one layer to determine what portions of the other layers are visible. I should point out any masks or effects that change the alpha channel of the matte layer will then also affect any layers being matted by this layer, so that could enable some pretty interesting stuff. Sometimes it might be easier to work with the white and black values of a layer, or its luminance values, to determine what's visible on the matted layers. So if I use this black and white gradient, and I set my photo layer to use that as a matte, then click this little switch so it changes from the cutout to this little sun icon. Now it's using this other layer as a luma matte, and you can see we get this nice gradual fade where absolute white equals 100% opacity, and absolute black equals 0% opacity. If I toggle my transparency grid, you can see that it is indeed causing this photo layer to fade off from fully opaque to fully transparent. If I click the invert switch, once again, you'll see it gives me the opposite. Luma mats are really handy for incorporating texture into your designs and for giving you a lot of control over the final look. Maybe I want to use this texture to grunge up my shape. I'll set the triangle to use that as a luma mat, and there we go. If I want to adjust that look, I can again take advantage of effects like levels in this case on the texture layer to change the output of the white and black values on this texture layer, which then ultimately affects the visibility of my triangle. And remember, I can animate both of these independently if I want to create an effect like this. And maybe you can even try weird stuff like using a layer, like our triangle, as a luma mat for one layer and as an alpha mat for another. All kinds of cool possibilities here, right? Hopefully you've seen how understanding and using track mats can make a huge difference in the amount of complexity you're able to bring to your motion graphics and compositing work. So dive in, start using them, and level yourself up. Head over to schoolofmotion.com to learn more about our interactive online curriculum, and let our team know if you have any questions at all. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.